Okay, hi. Um, my name is Markus Glaser. I'm from uh, Palo Verde. Um, and uh, as probably a lot of uh, people in the room, I've also started thinking about how we can use AI, Jet GPT, um, and all that kind um, in the context of a wiki. And today I want to focus on the particular question of interacting with a wiki in natural language, because that's probably one of the new, basically new things that can arise from using chatbots. I mean, that's what the name says. Um, and um, I would like to explore together with you um, how, uh, what, what are the particular challenges, how could we design uh, an interface, what would we need to do so in order to be able to talk to a wiki. So, um, I think uh, what we want to talk about is what would a conversation with the wiki look like? So how do I talk? Um, what, how can we um, implement this? And um, yeah, um, raise uh, the use of a wiki to, to an entirely new level if we do it right. So there is a huge potential in there. Um, of course, there's also pitfalls. Um, and um, yeah, so um, natural language interaction. Um, the question that drives me is how do we make that actionable, right? So uh, we can come up with a lot of crazy concepts and think of visions, what we want to achieve, and they're all cool. But in the end, there's um, people like the people in, in this room, the people in this conference um, that need to do the actual coding, that need to make that actionable of some sorts. Um, and of course, there's um, quite a bit of a challenge here, so it's, it's not super easy. Um, and uh, yeah, let's um, just touch um, a few points. Um, first and most important is um, we are talking about free text of all sorts. So that's the new thing. Um, and it perfectly fits wikis, um, not so much semantic wikis. Um, we do have structured data here. Um, but um, yeah, as, as, as Marcus pointed out in his talk before, um, all these new chatbots, they rely on just free text. Um, so you can write free text in a wiki and then um, use it uh, with your chatbot. And um, that's basically not um, a break in, in like the form um, uh, that uh, that knowledge is, is represented. And um, I think that's one of the interesting um, bits here. So we're talking about free text of all sorts. When I think, when I talk about natural language interaction with a wiki, I'm not talking about a natural language navigation interface. I think that is something that has been explored before. Um, it's, um, yeah, um, I don't know if it's of particular use in a wiki, um, but, but uh, yeah, I'm not talking about that. So what we talk about is work with texts. Okay, so what kind of tasks could we do? What, what kind of things could we um, achieve? Um, so basically, um, I guess that's what you've all experienced, uh, experimented with. Um, we can we can do search tasks. Um, we can ask uh, the wiki, um, you know, when we do a search, is there any information on this, for example? Um, that that querying bit, um, of course, um, is uh, will be predominantly used by the reader role. Um, then, uh, on the other hand, uh, we do have transformations. Um, this is what we also see a lot, and you've all seen the examples of like make this text uh, be understandable or legible for a six-year-old, or can you translate this text into English or into German? Or, you know, find a category summarize. There's a lot more, of course. This is just examples you see here, um, and of course, there's also the generated part. So. Um, help me brainstorm, um, do some bootstrapping of, a, of an article, add some context lines, things um, things like this. So these are prototypical tasks. I think searching transformation and generating, um, this is what, what I want to focus on. Um, as a side note, I don't think generation will be very helpful in the wiki. Um, because the knowledge in the wiki is very original. 
Um, I mean, typically we can store some niche knowledge about something, and that's typically not available in the um, wider context. So um, when we talk about generation, it's more like um, helping somebody write their original context in a, in a good way. Okay, so uh, the other question I had was, how can we interact um, with the wiki and in, in, in a spoken or in a natural language way? Um, and um, I see when, when I look to the interfaces we've seen, um, I see basically three um, prototypes here. One is issue, just issue your command in natural language. That would be something like uh, translate this into English, for example. Um, then we have this typical chat GPT form of a dialogue. Um, so you start with something and then you start refining your uh, um, your topic or um, the, 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 the output um, and uh, you, you enter a dialogue with the chat, chat bot. And um, the third one, which probably the coders among you know is uh, completion. So that is basically the system predicts what you're gonna type next and it types it for you. Um, so that's also a very interesting concept um, to, to follow. Um, it's, it's particularly um, important or useful when you have uh, patterns, like always the same form of an article or always the same um, the, the, the same line uh, in line three, um, something like that. Okay, um, so uh, to make this a little bit more like uh, tangible, um, here is uh, some prototypical interface. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit later uh, where you can issue commands, like write an introductory paragraph on how Wiki can be a source of truth for ChatGPT. So you enter a command and then some, it pops out some text, uh, which you can then use in your wiki. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Um, the other is dialogical form. So um, as I said, um, you maybe um, enter a prompt to chat GPT. And then here uh, in this example, I tried um, to get some uh, Lua module for my uh, wiki. Um, so I asked it to, to create something that um, gives me a green dot when there's a due date, um, when, when the due date is not passed and I get a red dot uh, when the current date is passed due date. Um, actually, I get some code and the code is actionable. So you can copy that and, um, and put it into your wiki. Now, I wasn't happy with that. And I asked um, it to change this template so that the orange dot is displayed. So blah, blah, blah. Um, I asked it to change something and it actually did. So it's, it's gradual refinement until you get the result you actually want to have. And here, um, this is one example of code completion. Um, so um, I used uh, Visual Studio Code for this um, and um, said this is of type .wiki, um, so wiki text. And it actually um, seems to understand that I'm talking about data types. So I added one data type um, integer. So this German thing means numbers. Um, this German thing here means strings. Um, I um, intentionally put in mixed language here because I wanted to see if it picks up the pattern and it actually does. So um, it uh, starts completing my um, code here. Um, of course, the idea is at some point you can feed it with like content of your wiki and then it will hopefully find patterns and do auto completion. I mean, in, in theory. So this is the vision part, of course, here. So uh, let's take a little bit of a more in-depth look in how would we do that when we use natural language. Um, so probably when you ever had some natural language interaction before chat GPT, you did something like this, wiki summarized paragraph. So you, you use very simplified speech um, and, uh, and just use basically things that the system can easily identify. Um, of course, in the new way, uh, we can we can just use language as we have it. Um, and let's just think about it. So we have some requests that um, uh, like this one, what do you know about semantic compound queries? And then the, the bot would, I don't know, issue a query to the wiki or it would um, actually 
have the content of the wiki available and um, output you with an answer. Um, or you, you, you give it another command like write a short summary on semantic compiled queries. Um, the thing that these requests have in common is um, they are standalone. So they don't require any other sources or context or anything else. What I found is when, when I played a little bit with uh, yeah, um, ChatGPT and the wiki, um, most of the texts, most of the requests I have um, do have some referral, some reference. Um, so for example, translate the following text into English or translate this paragraph into English or add an introductory sentence to the following list. So basically um, you do have a text that um, that's already there. And then you want to work with the text, right? So you want to improve the text. You want to um, modify it and do everything you can do with chat GPT or with um, like language models. But in, in that situation, you need not only the command, but you also need the text, right? So um, that's um, an interesting bit uh, from a UI perspective, UX perspective, uh, we need to solve this somehow. Um, and of course, uh, when you go to um, uh, more like dialogical ways, then you have to provide context. So um, if I prompt it and say add an introductory sentence to the following list, and the following list is with the external reference, and now I'm not happy with it, then um, I say make the sentence understandable for non-tech people. So the sentence, of course, refers to the output of what I get out of the first uh, um, out of the first prompt. So again, this adds a layer of complexity. We need to somehow keep track of the context if we want to enable it um, to do like dialogical um, things um, or dialogical conversations with the wiki. So um, let's just re recap. Um, I, from my, my experience, only a few prompts that you issue are standalone. Uh, most prompts refer to some external text um, you want to work on. And uh, when you go into refinement, the refinement strategy, then longer conversations, they require context. And that, of course, is something um, we need to consider. Okay. Um, so what are the benefits then of natural language interaction? Why should we even do this? Or why should we even go down that path? Um, I think one of the main uh, things is um, working with a system with the wiki in natural language gives you um, more freedom on the one side and more precision on the other side. Just think of uh, something like this prompt, write a short summary on how to use semantic compound queries with sub-objects, write it so that a non-tech person can understand. I mean, that is very precise. Um, and I can even add, when, when I refine that, I can add precision and add more um, to it. But on the other hand, I have like extensive freedom. Um, uh, you see, I, I just used a non-tech person here. I could also say a six-year-old or a manager or um, a, a developer, or, you know, um, I can, I'm, I'm very free to choose. And by that, I'm also, um, uh, I'm, I also do have the ability to, to be rather precise in what I want to tell the system. Um, so um, I don't think there is any UX with like form fields where you can get that level of, of freedom and that level of precision again. Um, the other thing is um, we can have um, a refinement. I already mentioned that. So, uh, for example, I had, um, if we take that example, add an introductory paragraph to this list, um, Docker Swag, et cetera. Then um, the output um, I got was not very nice. I didn't like it. So um, I changed um, and um, replaced paragraph by sentence. So I'm, because it gave me like a lot of words. Um, now, um, this was also not so good. So I, I qualified the introductory sentence and I said, I want to have it neutral. And then um, it started always mentioning these items, which is, doesn't make any sense. So I instructed it to not mention the items in the sentence. And that's how I got the introductory sentence. 
You might argue that, by the way, I did that refinement. I could have written the introductory sentence on my own. Um, but of course, um, if we talk about uh, working with larger texts, um, then this refinement is, of course, uh, something that's very valuable. And uh, you can do it quite easily and, again, very precise. Um, also, uh, last thing um, I, I see as like a big benefit here is um, talking is a very natural way of interaction. I think if you have played with uh, with these chatbots, you might have caught yourself doing adding sentences like this. Um, Vicky, can you please do X or great, now add. Or that's good, thank you. So I always have the urge to be polite to that bot. And that is because it's such, such a natural uh, interaction. Um, I never have the urge to be polite when I click on a form field or on a button. But here, that is just, um, yeah, it's just a, the, a very intuitive way of, of working with the system. Um, and you can also see it uh, when when you look at uh, like how chats work and how easily chats are adopted by people and how much uh, knowledge is generated in these uh, mediums. So um, even if we took out all the other benefits, this like making interaction very natural um, is of course something we should dive into. Okay, what is the what are challenges to the UI? So um, just take this sentence, we can change the second word in the third paragraph. So as I said, referral to text is something that's very hard uh, to do when you talk to a wiki. Um, but let's, let's step one, uh, get one uh, step back. So um, I did um, two um, prototypical implementations of, of how to interact with a wiki using um, a, um, a chatbot. One of them um, it looks like this. Um, so that's a, a chat, um, it's, it's rocket chat. And um, basically I told it to, um, or I uh, enabled it. So you can ask Blue Spice, that's our wiki, um, certain things. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you, it to you live because I messed up something yesterday. Um, but um, the results now are better than what you see here. Um, the, the point here is um, I tap into the power of natural language interaction without actually indexing the wiki. So what we do here is I, uh, I use this question um, and then um, I phrase it, I, I have ChatGPT extract the keywords and phrase them into a query, which I just point on the wiki using a standard query interface. Um, why do I do this? So let's go back one slide. One of the challenges we have is the content of a wiki is changing fast. Um, information that we want to provide needs to be up to date and it needs to be precise. So um, I can't do a retraining of um, uh, of, uh, of a chatbot, like, you know, every five minutes. Um, but what I can do is I can refer to the original source and I can use the power of a chatbot to help me identify um, the perfect original source um, in, a, in, in a way of interaction um, that, that is natural to me. So that was the idea um, to uh, just tap into um, a chat um, talk to the wiki in my natural language, and then um, the wiki gives me back the precise search results. Um, that, uh, that had some challenges. Um, I think that is, um, they, they are overcome now, but um, when, when I started doing this, um, I used, uh, I, I had the problem that um, you know, at some point you need to make ChatGPT um, give you a very stable and precise command. Um, so it needs to turn a natural language question into something that I can run against an API, um, like five keywords or um, the search query. Um, and it turned out that uh, when, I, when I started doing this, um, it wasn't super easy. I think with the functions, it's now uh, easier. Um, but um, it used to, to give me all sorts of formats. So I initially, I asked it to give me some JSON. 
um, and then it would use JSON, but you know, um, add random attributes, uh, which I can't read. Um, so um, I, I uh, ended up doing it in a way that I asked ChatGPT to give me a Google query URL, um, which I then can uh, work with and can modify and can then run against the wiki, um, which was a very interesting part. Um, again, I think now this is overcome. Um, but of course, um, just querying is, um, in my view, is is a little bit boring. So um, one of the of the things where I see a big um, benefit, a big plus in combining a wiki and a chatbot is that in in a chat, and I mean a chat among humans now. Um, there's a lot of knowledge generation. So that's what we see, at least in, in our uses of chats. There's a lot of questioning. How can I do this? Um, can somebody help me here or whatever? Um, and then um, it, it goes through a dialogue, um, like this works, or try this and it doesn't work, then okay, try that. Um, and once this is all um, done, then there is a solution. So now the question is, the solution in a chat is very, um, is, is vaporizing very fast, so it's very short-lived. Um, how can we persist this? And um, I think, wouldn't it be cool to just have, um, I call it the bot, Victoria here. Um, so to just ask it, the, the wiki bot, can you summarize what we just said and put it on a wiki article? So what you can do is you can, um, you can go to the source where knowledge is being, or yeah, no, let's let's say knowledge or insights are being generated, and then preserve them in a wiki. Um, so that uh, connection, I think, uh, is something that can be very beneficial at some point. And I think we have all the ingredients. So ChatGPT um, knows how to summarize conversations. Um, we can um, add it. We, we can make the text more beautiful. We can ask it to um, to use that text and push it to the wiki. So these things um, are not very far away, um, and the wiki then can be a source of truth. And you know, go back to the search thing. Um, then uh, some um, you can also go back and query the wiki. Um, okay. Um, so let's, let's just move on to the second prototype um, uh, that is working inside a wiki with a text. And um, here I see some challenges um, that, that a UI needs to cover. Um, and I guess uh, I've, I've said it several times, so how to select um, a text hard to work on um, because it's hard to describe in words and it's it's hard also to assume a default here. Um, so we need to somehow highlight it and um, copy it or you know uh, know that this is the text part we want to work on. Um, and also we need to allow for easy refinement. So we need to keep the prompt um, visible so you can modify it. We need to uh, be able to undo um, and, and, and to undo an action we just did. And um, yeah, that's what um, one implementation currently looks like. I can show you this in a live demo. Um, so this is, um, I mean, of course, it's a prototype or a proof of concept, so it's not very nice. Um, what you can see here um, is a, uh, a form I added on top of the standard edit page. Um, and um, I can add a prompt here. Um, just let me find one. So we had this introductory paragraph to the following list example, um, and send it uh, to um, yeah to the chat uh, GPT, and then I get a result. Now my question was not what can I do with chat GPT, but how can I interact with the wiki. So um, now I have this button and I can um, use it here and replace my given selection with an answer. Um, and now I have the means to refine this. So instead of paragraph, I can now write sentence, um, execute this. Now I get one single sentence and I can just click on replace selection. And you know, I have full control over what happens. I can um, 
proofread it before I want to get it to my uh, original text. Um, of course, this is not like the perfect way and it's not supernatural, um, but it just shows how a workflow would work. So in, in um, uh, probably a different rendering would be to have a chat bot here on the side of the screen, um, which is also possible. But um, I think in the wiki, we're doing mostly editorial work. So we want to um, make sure that the result we put into the final text is the one we really want to have. Um, also, um, I found that uh, there is some stuff that is um, that is very common. So um, I use it several times and I don't want to type it. Um, so that's tapping into the like command, the standalone commands. Uh, like find two categories for this text or uh, summarize uh, the selected text, which I added some some buttons here. Um, so what 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 I want to show you is that um, what I found is that creating an interface or just prototyping an interface um, for using these chatbots is not um, super is super hard, but it's also not super easy. So you have to think a bit a little bit for not to lose this intuitive power um, that you get when you uh, work with the chatbot here. Um, so what are the, the changes? Why, um, why do I think this will change stuff? Um, I think, um, and that's just very few slides left. Um, I think uh, if we think of it in terms of roles, then um, when, when we read, uh, text we can do instant transformations um like somewhere you have this 27 screen pages long uh, wiki article um you can just ask it to summarize and, and it will do it instantly or translate it or change the text to a level so we will see that on a reader level there will be buttons on the page giving you a different shape of the same text um, so you don't you don't have to write all sorts of text in simple English and normal English and, or standard English and um, in expert English, <laughs> but you just can write it in in I don't know one level and then have the the bot transform it for you. Um, when you go uh, to, when it goes to editing, then um, I think that we can we can focus on the content even more. So as humans, it's our task to produce the content. Um, and then let the assistant do the polishing. So why not? Um, that's um, that's perfectly okay to have uh, to make to, to have a, an assistant make your text beautiful. Just as a side note, um, this is what most of my slides looked sixty seconds, sixty minutes ago, um, and I had a designer here, which like an AI companion, uh, which started designing my slides. Um, which is very interesting because it makes the slides look much more beautiful, but the polishing also makes you lazy. Of these slides, they get less meaningful towards the end because I thought, ah, the, the AI will just do it for me, so I don't need to care. Um, okay, just a side note. <laughs> um, now, uh, I see uh, the, the, the one of the big things that we will see when uh, we attach or when we combine wikis and um, uh, ch chatbots, um, we will be able to tap into knowledge from different interfaces, from, say, um, a chat interface. And um, as I said before, a lot of knowledge is generated um, there. So if we can tap into that, if you combine that, then we go directly where the knowledge of the insights are being generated. Um, and we can hopefully much more easily get them into the wiki. And of course, um, the, the way we see now the, the natural feeling or the, 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 the way how the speech currently is natural uh, when we use chatbots um, indicates that um, spoken interaction may not be that far. Um, so um, that opens up interacting with the wiki in um, environments where you need like hands-free um, you know, spoken text um, or also for people whose, um, who, whose favorite thing is maybe doing something else than writing or typing. 
Um, so they could also interact with the wiki in, a, in an easier way. And we do have some research projects on that, um, like um, trying to interact with the wiki in an industrial environment where you have um, where you have people that their, their favorite thing is to run machines, not to write documentation. So um, we're just trying to do that at the moment. And of course, um, I think that the, the big thing here is the question, what is the wiki's place? And uh, uh, as, as Marcus in his talk before, um, uh, I think a lot of people are thinking of, do we still need wikis? So where is where's the place for this um, when we have this all knowledge uh, super chat uh, thingy out there? But um, I think what, what you never, uh, what, what we should not forget is that uh, any um, generative AI needs some source of truth. Um, it needs some source where it can um, get its knowledge from and ingest that. Um, and of course, uh, a wiki is already running on natural language. So we produce texts that have a lot of truth in it, hopefully. Um, and uh, chatbots can, um, can maybe use that as, as a source um, of their own knowledge. Um, and ultimately, um, we came to the idea uh, that um, maybe the wikis could also be a place where like artificial uh, intelligence and human knowledge can coexist. So think of that chat example where um, humans, where some conversation is that creates some knowledge. Then you put it into the wiki and then you have an editorial process um, as there is in the wiki. Like people will um, will proofread what, what's in there and will um, check the facts and will then improve it. Um, so you have that that um, knowledge preservation and also um, the, um, yeah, the, the, the care work for knowledge basically done in the wiki. Um, and then that can again be a source of truth uh, for, um, for a chatbot. Okay, so that's it. Um, that are some thoughts on wikis and uh, AI. Um, and that ends my talk. So do you have any questions or any remarks on this? Okay, everybody wants coffee break. Wonderful. <clears throat> I try to be really fast so you don't take off too much time of your break. Okay, um, if there are no questions, then thank you for listening and um, enjoy the conference.